Okay, let's look at some uh, computations with normal distributions, both probability and inverse probability computations. We're going to build on what we already know, and then ultimately there's going to be some shortcuts that are going to be very nice that we're going to show you before we get to the end of the video here. So how can we compute the following probabilities? X is normal with mean 0 and standard deviation 1, in other words, standard normal. What's the probability that X is less than 0? That one you don't need a calculator for. And then what about the probability that X is between negative 1 and 2.5? And then what about X is normal, uh, mean 3, standard deviation 2? What's the probability that X is between 2 and 5 and X is less than 7? Let's look at some of these. <clears throat> now, in the days before computers and calculators, mathematicians used numerical calculus techniques to painstakingly compute probabilities for a standard normal and other probability distributions and recorded these in tables. And all they are, although they are now antiquated by the readily available uh, calculator and computer programs, some version of a table is typically still included in most statistics textbooks. And you'll see areas of these different types that we will have to compute. A left-tailed area, uh, uh, which is a probability that X is uh, less than C, or uh, Z, sometimes we call the for, for reasons we'll explain in a little more detail later, uh, Z, uh, Z as a normal distribution. Uh, so we'll call it Z instead of X a lot of times. A right-tailed, Z is greater than some constant. An interval, Z is between, say, 0 and C, or between two values. And then two-tailed, like this. And you'll see all these different kinds of tables. Now, all Although some version of a table is still typically included in many statistics textbooks, they are usually only accurate to four decimal places, and when doing further computations and interpolating values not exactly in the table, answers are typically only good to two decimal places once you do some calculations. So, you know, if you only need two decimal places, that's fine, but today one is much more likely to have a scientific calculator than a table, and even if they do have the table, they probably got a scientific calculator anyway. And today's graphing calculators give answers more accurate uh, to many more decimal places than, than the tables do. And much easier uh, to, to get it out of the calculator anyway. Or also some computer programs such as Excel have these in or statistical packages as well. So we're going to assume that all computations will be done on TI-84, TI-Inspire, or simulator, simulator calculator or computer program. So again, if we're going to go back and do these calculations, let's see how we could do them. Now, of course, to do this, one way we could do it is know the actual formula. We could put this in with the particular value of sigma and mu, put this in our calculator and figure these out. Now, the probability that x is less than 0 for when 0 is the mean we know that that's 0.5 because the mean and the median are the same. We know the cause of the symmetry, that's 0.5, so we need a calculator for that. But if we want to find the probability that, say, x is between negative 1 and 2.5, one way to do it is to put the graph of the PDF, put the PDF in Y1, pick an appropriate window here and graph it. There's a graph. And then just do the calc number 7, put a lower limit of negative 1, upper limit of 2.5, and we can use our handy-dandy uh, area calculator on the cal uh, calculator and it will shade it and compute the area. From the home screen that looks like this, function integrate y1 x negative 1 2.5. We can do the same thing on the home screen if you have the newer operating system and it looks like this. Okay, you just go math 9 comes up with an integral sign, we put our lower limit of negative 1 and our upper limit of, uh, what is it here, 2.5. And I think, hopefully, my right formula is in Y1. I'll check it just a second. If it didn't come out the right answer, I think it's right. And then DX here. If I have the right formula in Y1, this will come out to be the same answer it is. And I have the formula in, in Y1. I actually have it worked out. Uh, as the normal PDF, which we'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, but anyway, that's the, uh, if you got the right formula in, that's what it looks like on that calculator.
Okay. So that's how we can do it. We know how to do that because we know if we have any formula for PDF in Y1, we could do that. Now there are some shortcuts. Uh, let's let's well let's do another one without a shortcut. We can go from two to five, normal three two, change the formula there, like that, where we put in the uh, standard deviation is two there and there, and the mean is three there, and then we can again shade it or just calculate it from the home screen here. That's uh, minus, and then that's x minus three quantity squared in the top there that's kind of off screen. Okay, and so that will give us that probability. In the older operating system, it looks like this. <clears throat> For a normal distribution, if you use mu minus 10 sigma in place of negative infinity, that works pretty well. So if we want to find the probability that x is less than 7, um, well, mu minus 10 sigma, that's uh, 3 minus 10 times 2, that's negative 17. So we use that here for the lower limit. And then 7 for the upper limit, that will give me, a, uh, usually gives me all my digits correct. And so that works out pretty well here for uh, the integral here right at the home screen if we don't need to see the shading. But there's an easier way. Okay, so hang on with me a minute. It turns out that Instead of having typed all this mess in for that somewhat complicated formula, the normal distribution is the most important distribution. So it's built in the calculator. And notice we have a normal PDF. And eventually we're going to use the normal CDF and inverse norm as well. Well, let's start with just the normal PDF. I can do normal PDF, give it x, then the mean and the standard deviation in that order. And notice that the table for y1 and y3 here are exactly identical. So, no longer do we have to type in this formula, we can just put in this shortcut. How, how about that? Isn't that slick? And of course, the graphs turn out to be the same. So there's a normal distribution with mean 3 and standard deviation 2. So that's a lot easier to put in than typing in all this mess. Well, that automatically says we can work that out. But there's also, even better yet, a normal CDF. So a normal CDF Kavak calculates a probability, and it's not a true CDF. A true CDF would be uh, going from negative infinity up to the x value, but this one does between two x values. So it works like the CDF programs do on the Inspire for binomial CDF that we looked at earlier, but not like the binomial on the TI-84. Uh, so anyway, uh, but it does work like our hypergeometric program that we wrote in. You give it a lower and an upper, you give it the mean and the standard deviation, and you paste that in. If you've got the newer operating system, once you get there, and by the way, it's under distribution, okay, so that's, uh, I believe that's second variables, second bears gives you distribution, and it's number two there. If you have the newer operating system, this little uh, wizard template will come in, and you just fill in the, the boxes there, the numbers, hit paste, and it'll come up like this on the screen. If you have the older operating system, it'll go straight to normal CDF open parentheses, and you have to know the right order. It is uh, lower, upper, mean, standard deviation is the order. And there's the area. Or that's the area under the, C the PDF curve. That's the difference in two Y values on the CDF curve. Either way, it's the probability that X is between the 3 and the 9. Now, how slick is that? That is cool. And so that saves us a ton of time. You can get the same thing basically on a uh, Inspire, and the way you get there, well, let me just pull up an actual Inspire here uh, and show this to you. Uh, let's clear this out. <clears throat> so it's Menu, Probability, Distributions. Remember down here somewhere we found Geometric and Binomial and some of the ones we did before, <coughs> but I can do Normal CDF. And again, again, give it a lower bound. Let's say we want to go from three to five on a standard, on a uh, uh, normal with a mean of of uh, six and a standard deviation of one. And boom, there's the probability, just like that. So that's pretty, pretty cool.
and there's another one worked out there. Now on the TI-84 we have a nice little automatic shader that works too. You can go to a thing, you go to distribution, but go right arrow to draw and do shade norm and again give it the same parameters, left, right, uh, mean, and standard deviation and it will on the uh, graphing screen it will draw it and shade it. Let me show you that in action. <coughs> so let me uh, let me just clear out some stuff. This notice I don't have to have anything in here. I can completely have this clear. Okay, so let's go there. Start from clean. Okay, and then I can go to distribution. Second distribution. Go to draw, shade norm, <coughs> and let's say if I want to do this one from 2 to 5, so 2 to 5, and the mean is 4, and the standard deviation is 2, and hit draw, boom. It's going to draw it out for us and shade it. And so it graphs part of that distribution. We can change our window if we want, but there it tells us the lower and upper there, and there is the, the value and we have it worked out and shaded which is pretty cool if you don't need the shading then we can just find that probability of course by just doing uh, distribution and remember it's CDF is actually the one we need for probabilities we really only need the PDF if we want to see the bell shaped curve if we don't really care about the seeing the curve which we really don't need to most of the time we can actually just go to the CDF and again, the same one, if I want to go from 2 to 5, uh, mean of 4, and standard deviation of 2, it's that, hit enter, and there's the probability. Uh, here it is shaded, and there it is just at the home screen. <coughs> so pretty slick. Now, I haven't found yet on the Inspire uh, anything that has a uh, I don't see under the probability or anywhere where there there is a shade distribution uh, possibility so the only way I know to shade on those is to actually draw the PDF and then use our our numerical integral uh, shader our area shader calculator thing from the uh, from the analyzing the graph so not quite as nice of a shortcut there on that particular one. But again, most of the time you don't really need to see it shaded. You can uh, you can just work it out. So uh, you just need to work out the probability. So that's going to be normal CDF for probability. So let's use that, okay, and get these probabilities. And at least on the 84, we'll go. Ahead, we might go ahead and shade it. So let's start with this one. Probability that X 8 is less than X is less than 11. Let's say this is X is normal with the mean. This, now this notation means the 10 is the mean and the 3 is the standard deviation. So see if you can work that out on your own using the shortcuts this time, okay? So let's not work any harder than we have to here and work this out. Press pause now. Well, you should have done this this way. Uh, to get the number, all you do is normal CDF. 8 is the left, 11 is the right, 10 is the mean, 3 is the standard deviation, close, boom, there it is. <clears throat> On the Inspire, it's norm CDF, 8, 11, 10, 3. If you want to actually see me type that in once, let's go ahead and do that. So, uh, menu, probability, distributions, probability <coughs> our normal CDF we wanted to go from uh, 8 to 11 and we wanted to have a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 3 say OK and there it is right there 0.378 etc okay now if I want to shade it it's pretty easy to do on the on the 84 uh, I went ahead and cleared my drawing first to make sure any shading that was on there before is gone then I did shade norm 8 11 10 3 so if you want to actually see me put that in here we go 
Uh, first of all, clear my drawing. Second draw. Hit enter twice. That clears it off. And now I can, can go to uh, distribution. Right arrow to draw. Number one, shade. And I want to shade from 8 to 11. Shade the probability, the area between 8 and 11 for x. That's lower and higher for x. And then the mean is 10. And the standard deviation is 3. And click draw. And it should pick a window. Actually, it may not pick a good window for us. So now we may want to switch the window. Uh, let's see. If the seat's normal, centered on 10. And we could go, let's say we go three standard deviations each way. That's 9. Let's say let's go from 0 to 20. All right, let's take a look at that graph. Let's re-graph it, and let's see what happens. Uh, the, I'll have to redo the command. So if I just quit, if I hit enter, it'll execute the last command again. So there you go. Not bad. And if I wanted to come in a little bit on the top uh, to zoom in a little bit, I could. But, but there's, the, uh, there's the graph with the shading. <clears throat> okay. The only way I was able to get the shading on the on the Inspire though was a little bit a little bit harder. I actually went to the uh, graphing window here, and Control G will show my functions. And no, notice for one, I put Norm PDF X 10.3. Okay, that's still what I have. That's the right one. And then from here, uh, let me just go ahead and delete this, and I'll show you what how how I did that. Okay, so I for, so once I had that, remember I, I can go to menu and go to analyze graph and then shade an area and calculate it by doing integral number seven. It even looks like like that. So lower bound in this case was uh, eight, and upper bound was eleven, and now it shades it and calculates. Oops, now it's moving around, so it may not be right anymore. Can also move things around on the on the Inspire, which sometimes is useful, sometimes is not. Okay, I want to go from eight to eleven. And there we go. I only wanted to move the text out of the way. All right, so there's the area there. So we had to do it just like we would any others. There's not a special shortcut to it, but there is that area calculator shortcut, which is nice. The numerical integral. Okay, so we have that. <coughs> All right, how about a left-tailed area? Well, for left tail, you want to put in negative infinity, which you actually can do in the Inspire. You can say a norm CDF from negative infinity to 4, mean of 10, standard deviation of 3, and it comes out and works it fine. Uh, on the calculator here for the 84, you can't put in negative infinity. What usually, what always will work pretty well is mean minus 10 times the standard deviation or something in that ballpark. And actually, just I just wrote it in that way. Mean is 10 minus 10 times the standard deviation of 3. Then, if that's for lower, that might as well be negative infinity. because there's Not that there's not any area to the left of that, but that it's so small that we can ignore it. And then, because the decimals that it comes up are off the screen, more they're further out in the decimal places than our calculator will show. And then the upper one is 4, so that will be from forever left essentially up to 4. And then the mean is 10, standard deviation is 3, and there it works it out. Normal CDF, no <coughs> normal CDF there. And then clear the drawing and then the shade normal here uh, on the same same uh, basic inputs that we had on that one. And it shades it. can't see much of it shaded. It actually goes to about here, so you can barely see the shading. There's a pretty small area. It's only 0.22. Probability that x is greater than 19, uh, here it's 0 .001, so you can't hardly even see the shading at all. But here it is, it's from 19 to infinity, or from 19 to, well, we'll use 10 plus 3 times the standard deviation. Mean plus 10 times the standard deviation. For infinity, works out nicely. Again, unless you just really need to see it shaded, you can just get the numbers just from here. 
so you don't even have to really use this shade normal. All right, how about a two-tailed area to the x is less than two or x is greater than seven? Um, so here I have only here I have it graphed actually because uh, if I shade from uh, actually what I have shaded is from two to seven, so it's the unshaded part. So there's a part here that's unshaded, and there's a little bitty part you can't see unshaded to the left of 2 here. Okay, and so it's actually not the shaded part, but the unshaded part. So the easiest way to do that, actually on the calculator, is to do 1 minus the part that's between. So 1 minus normal CDF from 2 to 7, that mean and that standard deviation. And that works out there. So here I did it, or you can do it in two parts two norm CDFs and add them together. I've done it both ways here on the Inspire. One minus the normal CDF from two to seven, 10, three, that's probably the easiest way to do it. But you can also do it as the two separate parts and add them together. This one goes from negative infinity to two. This one goes from seven to infinity. All those use 10 for the mean and three for standard deviation. You get the same answer either way. If you're gonna use this, then you have to worry about 84 you need to worry about what you're going to use for infinity and minus infinity um, graphing the CDF now well if I want to graph the CDF of course I could do it this way this is kind of the hard way so I'm going to do it the hard way first I stored 0 as M and 1 as S and I typed in my formula 1 over S times the square root of 2 pi times e to the negative this says X minus M quantity squared over 2 times S squared that's my PDF and then I said, okay, integrate this, well, essentially from negative infinity up to x, integrate y1, that's going to give me my CDF. That's the technique we used before for getting a CDF. And, of course, it graphs it, unfortunately, very slowly. But there it is, and now I can use that to do inverse probabilities. However, there is a shortcut. Let's go to the shortcut. The shortcut is you do that integral by just doing a normal CDF, you give it, well, negative infinity, which might as well be mean minus 10 times the standard deviation. And then you give it x. And then for the upper, and then you give it uh, the mean and the standard deviation. Here's the normal up here with the same mean and standard deviation. That's the normal PDF. And this is the normal CDF here. So now we have the normal PDF and CDF graph together. Now, of course, we could use that then to find some inverse norms by doing what? inverse probabilities. So if we want to find the 75th percentile, we could graph y3 is 0.75 and calculate where that crosses the CDF. And that gives us that x value. Remember, that's how we found a, an inverse norm before. But wait, there's an even better shortcut. Because we do this so much of the time, there's a really slick little shortcut. And that's called an inverse norm function. So we do an inverse norm by doing um, well, there it is, right there. It's number three under the distribution. So go to your distributions, choose number three, inverse norm. The first number you put in is the probability to the left, cumulative probability, that is, 0.75. Then you give it the mean and standard deviation, and out pops the x value. And it works exactly the same on the, on the uh, Inspire. So if you look, we've gotten several different shortcuts. And when it really boils down to it, you really only need two of these things. The only ones you really need um, are number two, normal CDF for computing probabilities, and then number three, inverse norm for computing inverse probabilities. And really, you can do the whole thing without drawing any pictures. It'll give you the numbers that you need right on the home screen. If you want to draw some pictures, then you might go to draw and do shade norm, or you might go to one and draw put in the formula for the PDF to get your nice bell-shaped curve or put in the formula for the normal CDF to get our normal CDF curve. Um, so if you want to graph them, you might use one. But if you're just finding probabilities, use number two. And inverse probabilities, use number three. And the equivalent things on the Inspire. Very slick, very easy to use probabilities. In the next video, we're going to come back and exclusively use those those uh, shortcuts there to do a few calculations and give you some more practice with that.